I have been trying to live sustainably or zero waste for a very long time. I would say over 12 years at this point. Throughout that time, I have tried many, many different zero waste swaps, sustainable swaps, all, all those sort of things. And honestly, the things that work for me, they work for me. You probably know the names of the things that work for me because I never stop talking about them. I've used the same brand of my essentials since I've been on the internet, I think. But maybe you might not know the things that I've tried that I didn't like. And today, that's essentially what we're gonna talk about. These are zero waste sustainable swaps I don't recommend and I would love to hear any of yours in the comments comments as well, what has or hasn't worked out for you. If any of these did work out for you and they're your holy grail, let a girl know. But I'm not gonna over explain the intro. I think you can tell by what I just said in the title what this video is about. So let's get into it. First things first, reusable paper towels. <laughs> and you're like, Shelby, but you don't use paper towels, so why would you not recommend these things? I just don't like them. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but like the towels and rags that I've like collected over the years, made myself, made from thrift store finds, etc. they work the same way, but I don't need to have them like specifically manufactured for that. I don't need to roll them up every time I clean them. That is just like creating more work for myself, in my opinion. So I just stuff all of my cloths into a jar, pull them out as needed, wash and repeat as needed. I don't need anything that is specifically made to be a reusable paper towel. Honestly, that just feels like really strange marketing. If it works for some people and it really helps like replace the exact habit of paper towels, that's great. But honestly, I haven't bought paper towels since ever, I, ever. I don't think I've ever bought them because when I moved out of my parents' house, I just, I was like, this is silly to waste money on this. So I just have never bought them. But if you do have like a regular habit of using paper towels, maybe, maybe doing the exact very similar placement where it like sits on a rack on your countertop, maybe that makes sense for you. But for me, it just, it just doesn't. So feel free to disagree with me in the comments. On that same line, um, I'm definitely someone who has bought these, has tried these. I've made them myself before. Those little zero waste makeup remover pads. I have an old video. I remember making these when I lived in my garage apartment. So it must have been five plus years ago that I made that video. Uh, but I remember using uh, shirts that I found in the dumpster hand sewing them myself to make those little reusable makeup remover pads. I think it makes sense to make those and use those if you have like a distinct habit of using like makeup wipes every day. But I never use makeup wipes like on a regular basis. I actually don't even know you know what the truth probably is? I probably didn't remove my makeup before I started double cleansing. <laughs> that might be the situation. Anyway, point being, I did try those little pads and I just think that they're hard to actually like get makeup off of your face with. Like you can't really white circle with them, like just unnecessarily. And then they're so small, so you have to put them in a bag to put them in a washer, which is totally doable and all fine and great and dandy if it's what you like to do. Just for me, it doesn't make as much sense, especially since I started double cleansing. So I use just like an oil to get my makeup off and it's so easy, gentle, no waste, I love it. And then I do have like a generic version of the makeup eraser and I will use that to get the makeup off from around my eyes. I don't need any sort of balm oil or anything, it's just water and they're really, really great for travel because I can just take that and like literally take my makeup off with water if I need to while I'm traveling. But it's like an actual regular face towel type size rag. So it's not these little circles that I'm like trying to get all of my makeup off with. I j it's just more user friendly. I don't really know how to put into words why I don't like those little pads. I highly recommend just trying to use like jojoba oil or some other kind of like balm or oil makeup remover and double cleansing with like whatever cleanser you wash your face with. And I just don't think those little makeup remover pads are worth it. But that's just my opinion. Another zero waste swap that you might might know if you've been around for a while that I don't recommend. If you don't know this, you should probably hit the subscribe button. You might be new here. But it was very popular in the zero waste movement like years ago to make DIYs. And deodorant was one of the ones that so many people talked about. And let me tell you, back then, I think there were so many more DIYs that that was the norm because we didn't have products that were plastic free and easily accessible to us to just be able to buy and not have to spend all the time and energy finding all the ingredients and then making it ourselves. And then honestly having like a really subpar product. I've never wanted to make it, nor do I think they work. Like I think everyone back then who was like, oh, this DIY recipe is working really great. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Let me smell your armpits. 
Let me smell your armpits. I'm joking. I don't want to smell anybody's armpits, but the reason I'm telling you this is because instead of DIYing my own stuff, years ago, I used native deodorant and it came packaged in like those little plastic containers. I was giving them to someone else who was reusing them to make their own DIY products. So I felt good about the waste that came from those plastic tubes. But the reason I was using native is because it was the only aluminum free, cruelty free, vegan and paraben free deodorant that actually worked for me. And it still is. I still have not found a single plastic free deodorant that works better. And if native still didn't have a plastic free option I think I would still be using it but the good news is I don't have to use the plastic containers anymore because native listened to us over the years and made a plastic free version of their deodorant and what's really cool is when they first launched these they were like circles now they're oval shaped like basically just like their regular old deodorant packaging, just plastic free. Another added bonus is just that Native is a partner of 1% for the planet, so they commit 1% of their plastic free deodorant sales to environmental nonprofits. And the packaging they use is Forest Stewardship Council certified. I don't know if you know this rumor in your life. It depends how hippie, tree hugger, environmentalist you are, but there's definitely a stereotype out there that the tree hugging hippies slash environmentalist, we stink. It's because we don't shower to conserve water. You know what I mean? And I, for one, am trying to beat that stereotype. So I've been using native deodorant because I don't stink. I absolutely love this formula. So they have a sensitive formula. This is the cotton lily scent. I use this one. I also have the unscented one, which I love. But the other day, Native did send me a package with their new collection, which is the candy shop collection. This is not for me, okay? I'm not gonna use this. But if you love smelling really sweet and good, this might be for you. Madison was very excited about this one and she just came up to me and goes, smell this, smell this, guess what it is? And I had no idea. I literally had no idea what this was. But I smelt it and she said, what do you think it smells like? I said, gummy bears? She's like, oh my God, yes! This is the candy shop gummy bear deodorant and it smells just like gummy bears. I can attest from a blind study. But if you think DIYs are a no-go and you still wanna have a plastic-free vegan option, check these out. I'm gonna leave a link at the top of the description. Shouts out to them for sponsoring. And you can use code SHELBY21 for 20% off of your first order. Now, can we talk about these? These reusable cotton swabs, right? They're like alternatives to the single-use cotton swabs. Okay, I understand the idea here. I just have never understood <laughs> what these are for. So like I use cotton swabs very rarely. Like it's a very rare thing that I use. I rarely use these. Let me know what you use them for. Cause I, I genuinely was like trying to think about this as I was writing down the things I wanted to talk about today. And I was like, what do people, what would someone use this reusable silicone cotton swab? Four. I've heard the cotton swabs putting them in your ear, no go. It's really bad. It can compact the wax. The fuzz from them can get stuck in your ears. Like, just no. So maybe that's the reason, but it would still be compacting the wax in your ear. So I just don't really know what people are using these for. When I use a cotton swab, the only use that I can think of is if I soak it in like hydrogen peroxide and I use it to clean it out like tech stuff. Like I'd use it to clean out the port of my charger, maybe around my keyboard. Definitely like in-ear headphones, I use like a cotton swab soaked in hydrogen peroxide to clean out the inside of those. But this reusable silicone option, you can't soak in anything. It's silicone, it's not absorbent. I've never bought one. I think I may have been sent them before, but I just have never understood the hype. They're way hyped on TikTok and I just, I just genuinely don't understand what they're for. Yeah, I just don't get it. I don't think, I don't think it's worth it. I don't think you need to buy this. Unless you could tell me what you would use it for. I'm all ears. <laughs> This is something I did buy and I did use and I only regret buying it because it really didn't fulfill the purpose that I really needed it to and that's reusable menstrual like period pads. I used them for a long time um, but honestly I had so many leaks with them that I just, I would never recommend them. I don't think they're worth it. I regret buying them. I think maybe also this comes down to having the right kind of underwear. You really need like a full coverage underwear um, that is like kind of tight to your body, which I is not my favorite. I don't love that. The period underwear I use now are the best ones I've ever tried. I can't leave you a link to them yet. But in general, my point is I don't recommend, don't think that period pads, reusable ones are worth it. Honestly, probably single use ones not worth it either. I feel like they would have the exact same problems. No, maybe not. Because when you use a disposable pad, the sticky line kind of goes the full length of the pad. The problem with the reusable ones were that they only snapped really in one place at the very middle so that it could go across the narrowest part of your underwear. So then the front and the back would just be flipping around doing somersaults while you're walking around, you know what I mean? There will be people in the comments telling you that they use them. So obviously they work for some people, like no doubt they do. Just for me, after finding the light that is period underwear, 
I would say no. Okay, for this one, I need to tell you about a problem in my life that is just so consistent. It's maddening. Everything I love gets discontinued, okay? Everything. Ask anybody in my life. It is an ongoing joke that if it's Shelby's favorite thing, it will be gone in a few months, okay? Uh, we're talking anything from food to body care products. In this specific case, just like reusable things that I love. Anything I love, it gets discontinued. And in this case, we're talking about Chico's produce bags, <laughs> okay? They've been discontinued. And the reason that I put them in here to say that I regret buying or like maybe something's not worth it is every other produce bag I've tried. <laughs> every other produce bag in comparison to Chico's collapsible produce bags, you just don't stand up. And it's not because they're not collapsible because they're pretty small things anyway. You can collapse them, whatever. These bags by Chico Bag were half mesh, half recycled polyester. I don't really use produce bags for produce. I throw my produce in my cart. I use produce bags for bulk bins. So when it comes to things like nuts, quinoa, spices, those sort of things, I eat a lot of red pepper, okay? I use these bags for red pepper a lot. And some of the bags actually are just completely recycled polyester. So you can even put things like flour in them. And there's no other produce bag that I have ever bought. No bag that I've been reusing that I like got for another purpose. I Girlfriend Collective leggings used to come in um, reusable zipper bags. I do use them, but they don't pale in comparison to my reusable Chico ones. I wanted to put this in here just to talk about it, to vent a little bit, but also to say that sometimes what really sucks about trying to find alternatives that you plan to use for years and years and years is that they're not the perfect solution. You're gonna keep looking for the perfect solution. And I have obtained and made and reused so many different produce bags over the years, trying to find something that could even pale in comparison to the Chico bags, and I just haven't. And I think it's so frustrating. The other thing is cotton, oh, I wanna throw up. <laughs> Oh, I'm really, really cringing. Um, I have sensory issues and they have gotten worse and worse over the years. I'm like, my heart rate is going up thinking about this. Um, cotton produce bags make me want to vomit. The texture of them, I can't deal with them, very unfortunately. So I just wish I could find more like recycled polyester bags that would be worth it to me because the rest of them, they're just not. I have a bag of bags that I've made or like I said, reused or been gifted or someone sent me, whatever, but I still use like the four Chico bags that I've had for years and nothing has ever paled in comparison. Here's the hill that I'll die on. No other reusable silicone bag pales in comparison to the original Stasher bag. You can fight me. You can fight me on it. I've never been paid by Stasher bags, sadly. I've tried so many reusable silicone bags. The amount of brands who have sent me reusable silicone bags to test over the years is a high number, and I've never even received a free bag from Stasher bag, but I own so many of them, and I swear by them. I don't think any of the lesser quality, cheaper, drop shipped, um, competitive brands. I don't think any of them are worth it. And I stand by that. Uh, also, uh, Stasher Bag has certifications like woman owned company, part of 1% for the planet. I think they're B Corp certified now. Like they're just, they're an incredible brand. And I don't think anybody even compares to them. So if you are looking at the price of Stasher Bags, cause I know they are expensive. I can all but guarantee that if you buy a cheaper one in hopes that it's going to work in a way that's going to replace single use plastic bags for you, you're just gonna end up upset and either going back to spending money every single time on a single use plastic bag or investing in the Stasher bags um, alternatively. This next one is like a huge category of things because basically, like I said, back in the day, there were not alternatives that were easily accessible for us to be able to buy. And so a lot of people were DIYing all of their body care things, which whatever, have at it. But as brands have started to realize that people want accessible, less wasteful alternatives, every brand in the world has tried to come out with sustainable products. And now looking back on it that I've tried so many of them, they just feel like money grabs. Um, a lot of them have been discontinued, not because I love them. <laughs> These brands were coming out with shampoo bars, right? Uh, different types of deodorants, different types of body care products that were like reusable or packaged in without plastic, etc. And I just think like when generic brands that put out products that are supposed to be more sustainable, they're just never that good, right? I've tried so many shampoo bars over the years from so many different brands and to make videos. I've made two videos, I think, testing a bunch of zero waste shampoos. I'll try to remember to link it up here. But I just find that if it's not a brand that already exists to do like that specific thing, the product is just not good. I wouldn't recommend them. Most of the things that I use come from brands who focus on that one thing or they perfected that one thing. And that's why they're the best because that's what they do. They're not just throwing products out, seeing what sticks. You know what I mean? I 
wanted to throw that category in here because I was thinking about it as I was writing this list. Swedish dish cloths. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. What purpose does it serve that like reusable tea towels or my rags or a, whatever I'm using to already wash my dishes, what, what purpose do they serve? But they don't last as long as a rag or a tea towel. You can reuse those for years. They're not gonna break down. Swedish dishcloths, so hard to say. You have to throw them out after so many uses. I, I think they're compostable, but I just, why? And also food huggers. I think as long as you have reusable storage containers that you can store like cut up foods in, or you have the reusable silicone bags that you can store the same stuff in, it doesn't make sense to have a food hugger that only fits a lemon, a bell pepper, an onion, a piece of garlic. It doesn't make sense to have this thing that only fits one food when you can just reuse what you already have and it will serve the same purpose. Let me know what zero waste swaps you tried that you would not recommend, that you don't think are worth it in the comments. I love reading comments like that. And I might make another part to this video of the things that you don't recommend and why you don't recommend them because I'm always looking to talk people out of buying things. It's my favorite thing to do. Also, huge shout out to Native for sponsoring today's video. Their link is at the very top of the description. The code is Shelby21 to get 20% off of your first order. And remember, until next time, you cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world needs all the good that you can do. Bye guys.